Notre Dame versus Miami. It isn't the oldest rivalry or the most traditional rivalry or even an annual rivalry, but it's the only rivalry with a t-shirt that still angers the Canes 30 years later. It's the only rivalry with names that sound like football. Zorich and Stonebreaker. Names that mean football. Blades and Irvin. Holtz and Jimmy. And it's the only rivalry with a fumble that wasn't a fumble. Notre Dame ball. They have fumbled at the one yard line. Jimmy Johnson furious. What can Brown do for you? Absolutely nothing against Miami in 1987. When does a rocket blast off? How about T minus 95 yards in 1990? Look out! It's over! This is a rivalry of hits, of hills. Randall Hill out there. Oh, First down, Miami. Of blowouts and blow ups. You want a gentleman's rivalry? and try Harvard Yale. You want something with higher octane? The Notre Dame Miami is the gas station for you. You see the intensity of this rivalry. Look, they've only met. This is just the fourth meeting in the last 27 years. But be honest, these last three, they didn't live up to the legacy. The stakes weren't high enough. This one tonight is very fitting. Chris Fowler will call the game tonight in a renewal. Chris, it feels very much like the old school Notre Dame Miami game. It does, Reese. Thank you. I, old school base formation here. It's wonderful to be back. It's a throwback yeah. look over here. You're right, though. The, the, the games that they played in the Sun Bowl and Soldier Field and last year in South Bend when both programs in the word of Irish tackle Michael Ginchy were, quote, in the toilet, that didn't really no, reawaken no. the glory days of 87 tonight like tonight's game does. This, this rivalry was the best that college football had to offer. Mm -hmm. had the best coaches, the best players, best personality, best games. It was the best thing that football college football had to offer it, it, you know you're in a big rivalry when they yeah. not only do it 30 for 30 but players became famous for their performances yeah. in these games you're talking about them 20 or 30 years later individual players remember that play that urban yeah. made yeah. or this guy <laughs> made it was just that's when you know you got a special rivalry i i was new to reporting in 88 89 i covered both games went up to south bend i thought i'd seen some hatred and rivalries oh yeah the oh. venom, <laughs> the what, what, what vitriol. Was what was it? It was that Miami represented everything that Notre Dame th thought they didn't stand for, and it was the opposites. And the the T-shirts here, I got the you know the Catholics versus convicts T-shirt. Got you know got the original, of course. It's been in a storage unit for a long time. <laughs> but the funny thing was the Notre Dame fans didn't really know the history of their own program. If you go back in the day oh. when Newt Rockney was rolling over people, you know, kicking ass and taking names, <laughs> they were the renegades. Yeah. They were the outsiders yeah. that were kind of spurned by the establishment team. So they, did, they didn't know their own DNA. Miami was just a latter-day right. Rockney team. Well, I was, I was at the game in 1985 when Miami wow. played Notre Dame, yeah. Notre Dame, and Miami beat them 58-7. to Very fast. I was looking from a coach's standpoint, and I watched that game. Jimmy Johnson did not run up the score intentionally. I promise you. Wait, wait, hold it. Miami just scored again. They, <laughs> they scored against everybody on the team. Notre Dame was like a and high they, school and team. They, hated, that day. Them. they, they hated them for that reason. And it was how they scored and what they did yeah. when they scored. Yeah. They let you know no, about it. And I think it just added to really their era of Miami being Miami. And it added to Notre Dame wanting to get revenge and going to get Lou Holtz and Lou Holtz's whole thing. Mm. You leave Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> but for me, you know, that whole deal. And, and I think the Irish players in the rematch in 89, they wanted to rumble again and holds kind of tamped him down a little bit and yeah. Chris Zorich was quoted as saying that kind of diffused Notre Dame's enthusiasm that game down here in 89 though when the Canes converted a third and 43 yeah. to Randall Hill I mean I thought the Orange Bowl was going to come apart because all the hatred in South Bend the year before that had turned around and the venom was on the Miami side of that game. It, it started though in 85 yep. because Miami beat him 58 to 7 hello 58 to 7. Yeah, I know. Hey, Jerry Faust, take care. It's nice knowing you. I just, I just can't, I'm just excited that these teams, because they both have their own story about what they're trying to accomplish, it's very cool to have this group of players and these teams and these coaches in this chapter in 2017. Yes, the t-shirts are cute, but the convicts label certainly does not fit no. this Miami team under Mark Rick. I think those old Canes thought that 
It brought out the best in them. The Irish players back in the day didn't really want to be called choir boys. They kind of said, we're badasses too, we're tough guys too. So I think it brought out the best in them as well. But uh, yeah, it's just fun to be back here. I, I hope the game lives up to this hype. This is an amazing yeah. postcard from Miami. I, I knew the Miami fans would, would show up and represent your hometown. I'm, I'm a resident down here. And this is cool. And I think on the on the 24th anniversary of the very first game day road show, 11-11-93 yeah. up in South Bend, when you picked against the Irish, I can't wait to see the buildup before this this headgear selection here. There's a little more gray hair in there. <laughs> there is. <laughs> you said that you're jet more, black. Mate, I'm, I was jet black and sideburns right there. But that, that pick was anticipated <laughs> without the headgear because it was before the oh, headgear. Uh, this pick is anticipated. Be fine. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens. It's good to have you back. My yeah. pleasure. Good to have you back. Ha happy to be a part of it. Tom, let's go over to you with more on this uh, renewal of the rivalry. <laughs> Chris, old school formation. Let me take you back to October of 2002. There was a young, stylish couple just starting their life together. They were in South Florida and wanted to know where was the place to go, the most happening spot, the place to see and to be seen. Their names, Jay-Z and Beyonce. And even though neither had any affiliation to the University of Miami, they decided they wanted to spend a night with the most electric atmosphere they could. They came to see the U. That was 15 years ago. The question is, is the U back now? Hot. Bright. Electric. Miami is many words. But it's one letter. Trail fan. That is the U, and that's how you do it. You don't do it like this. You don't kind of do it like this. I mean, it's like straight up the U. Where is the U? Man, the U is tradition. The U is family. The U is brotherhood. The U is hard work. When I first got to the University of Miami, we were looking for our identity. I said, we want to be good enough to when we say the U, they know who we're talking about. From 1983 to 2001, the U won five national titles. But did more. Miami dominated, conquered, transcended. The Canes were a physical force and a cultural creation, marked by one word above all. Swagger. You know, we had swagger at Miami because we knew we were going to win. He'll high step it in for the hurricane touchdown. We lost two regular season games in four years. So when you have that much winning, you're going to have confidence. And that's what we call swagger. Correct. Out of the end zone. Swagger becomes swagger when you have success and you have a good time doing it. 99 yards. I say have as much fun playing the game as you possibly can, and, and we did. Man, what ain't swag, man? I'm swag to so this chair right now, man. Edward Reed ripped it out of his hands. He's going the other way with the football. Miami's been having that for a long time. Guys have came here and had tremendous confidence in their ability and in themselves. Swagger's a lot of things, but first, swagger's winning. Swagger's winning in a way that people find entertaining. And uh, I think we're getting back to that. It's been a long time coming. From 2006 to 2015, the Canes stumbled to mediocrity, losing 56 games, earning zero 10-win seasons. My goodness. Clemson game, sitting in the 400s with the fans, and if you see guys not playing hard, it's very disheartening because we're going to play hard regardless here in Miami. The worst loss in the history of Miami football. Through the dark and into the light, the constant current and strongest support came from former Canes greats through their passion and their presence. Always great to be back. It's like you never left. We've seen uh, Andre Johnson out here, Michael Irvin, Olivier Vernon. Jamie Shockey, Reggie Wayne came by, Ed Reed. It's good. To hear them guys call me uncle. A national championship wasn't won with just Ed Reed. 
they saw the OUM. They're behind us and you know they believe in us too. You know, it's always kind of been Miami against the world and that's all we need. The world is again taking notice. From the turnover chain, to the stars in the stadium, to the undefeated record, the Canes have played well enough for people to ask that almighty question. Is the U back? We have not been afraid to say how great Miami's been in the past. Our players are not afraid to try to be as good. And I know where that you can be, and I know where that you needs to be. I want to fix that. Back would be national championship. Back would be undefeated. <laughs> That's back. Is the U back? It's kind of a loaded question in front of this crowd, obviously. When Jimmy Johnson first arrived, he had a meeting with his athletic director on campus who wondered, would we possibly put a picture of a football player on the helmet or a picture of a baseball player on the baseball team's caps? So Jimmy Johnson's response was immediate. Absolutely not. We are the U. And we need people to know what that U means. <laughs> Believe me, you look behind us. You get that vibe, and when Ed Reed swaggers out as an honorary captain tonight, Reese, we know the swag is back. <laughs> Not many define it the way the U has over the years. Even a guy in the pre-Jimmy Johnson era, a guy who's making that U fly high and proud, is Mark Rick. Now, when Mark Rick was a player here for Howard Schnellenberger, not there. That, he didn't look that way there. <laughs> but he might eat up leprechauns for breakfast. You know, there was a moment in which Rick ate up leprechaun secondary for lunch. Rick going up top, 79-yard touchdown. Oh. That gave the Canes the lead, though Notre Dame did come back to win the game there <laughs> as a result. All right, so Mark Rick comes in. He's in charge of the swag, but we all understand that Mark Rick is to swag what Pitbull is to opera. I mean, the occasional goatee notwithstanding, <laughs> Rick just doesn't personify swag. But he is acutely aware of how the Canes flamboyant history can help his current team. He instituted a direct line to make sure all the former Hurricane players could get in touch with the program anytime they wanted. Ed Reed has been around all week. Breakthrough moment is getting closer against Notre Dame. Mark Rick with Maria Taylor. Coach, one of your junior DBs, Michael Jackson, said that this game against Notre Dame is a legacy game. How have you approached expressing the importance of this game to your team? Oh, I don't know. We, we talk about uh, how important every game is, obviously. Um, it's been, uh, we talk a lot about winning the conference because that's one thing we could control. And then you, now you get out of conference, you're late in the season, you're undefeated, and you got a chance for bigger things. And so... Uh, we certainly know it's a big deal, and uh, you know it's just like this year we had the 30-year reunion for the 1987 national champions, you know, and uh, we you know we talk about you know we'd like to have some reunions one day, you know, so we talk about it a little bit, but we mostly focus on trying to trying to win. He started by getting that feeling, telling them Miami is going to play in the ACC championship game someday. Are you going to beat that team? It's really indicative as they come into this non-conference game of how they've changed their mental approach. I think him being an alum, not to mention his personality, yeah. has a lot to do with him getting it. This brotherhood with Miami is stronger than anywhere I've ever seen when it comes to their past to their current players. And I think this whole thing is the swag back. We've been talking about that for 15 years. What the swag is, Des, to me, yeah. is recruiting players from Broward and Dade County in the South Florida area who are passionate about football, right. are passionate about competing with one another against whoever, bring them on. Right. And we have memories of Mike Orvin high-stepping or guys trash-talking, so they had that moniker of swag. Yeah, exactly. But the, when Miami's Miami, yeah. they got guys, local guys, that want to play for the U, yeah. and they got an attitude about them, and they play together for, with a love for each other. Yeah. Tell you what, to be a championship team, you got to have give a championship effort. Now, you know, like I know, I was a hell of a blocker when I played wide out. I'm going to show you a tape that gets me damn excited. I got to stand up for this yeah. brother tape. When I watch the Canes receivers in the running game, they are some of the best blockers in the nation. Look at Mom Richards at the top of the screen. And here he is. He's going to run this guy off. His, 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 his other receiver catches the ball. Watch this. 
He goes up. Watch how he just drives his defender into the sideline. That's a championship effort. That's what led to that touchdown. In order for championship plays, you need championship efforts. Here he is again. Look on the edge. You see your quarterback. He's scrambling. He's coming out wide. What do you do? You go and take out a Seminole. You put him on his ground. Legal hit. No penalty. <laughs> championship effort. Championship play, baby. And listen, look, Berrios, you think this guy is just a slot receiver that can catch some balls, you know, 13 yards? Watch this effort against Virginia Tech last week. Mm. This is why they beat Virginia Tech the way they did. This is what's going to take tonight against um, Notre Dame. Championship efforts lead to championship plays, Coach. Ron, yeah, that gets me going. I love yeah. that. He yeah, loved man. that. Did he? he love that? Absolutely. Love those receivers. That was, a, people. That was Desmond. He played. Maybe I, uh, Desmond. <laughs> what, what did he just mumble? <laughs> yeah, he said that wasn't Des when he played. Man, you were beating him. Deep. Oh, no. Come on. Come on, Herb Street. Walter Smith were crushing, dude. Come on, Herb Street. Yeah. Desmond. Miami's offense is a tough offense in rent. Yeah. Notre Dame's defense is going to have to play an umbrella, old-fashioned, keep everything inside yep. in front of them because they're going to negate the Miami speed. Mm -hmm. If they don't, if they get outside yep. and get over, it's over. Okay. Notre Dame had got a chance when they got the no, Notre Dame has got to do a good job at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football because there's opportunities for Miami with that speed. Not only can they block, yeah. those receivers can get downfield like you're saying <laughs> and make it. some catches. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, Notre Dame had been the only team in the country to hold everybody under 21 until last week. Wake Forest found a little bit against them. The Irish starting to wear down. Irish a three and a half point favorite on the Bears board. Uh -oh. I still don't have a turnover chain for Bear. Uh -oh, Bear. <laughs> Bear, I think the moment is here. We're crossing the top of the hour. Where are we here? I, I think this is obviously the most toughest opponent that Miami has faced this year. But I think everything that's happened with Miami this year is building towards today and the end of the season. The hurricane, not playing a game for a couple of weeks, being in Orlando for a while. It's understandable that it took them a while to get going. All the close wins, I think this is a team that's together. They're tight, they're uniform, there's a belief now. And I think fourth quarter tonight, the humidity, the depth of the Miami front seven, I think Miami wins. Wow. Yeah. The bear says what he thinks. Yeah, he's, there have been times when yeah, he's picked against Miami. That's yeah. right. So when him, yeah. for him to that's pick a, Miami, he's right. not just that's a good pick. That, boy. He's just saying that's what he thinks. Nice pick, Bear. Nice pick. <laughs> I talked to some medical people this week. Bear made a great point yeah. about the impact of the hurricane early on. They didn't have the same kind of training. Right. Could it be that the Canes? are in that proverbial mid-season form while everybody else yeah, is sort of holding on yeah. down That's a good the stretch. That's a really good point. We'll yeah. find out the, tonight. Look at, look at the crowd. Look at this. Look at loving this. <laughs> the best, <laughs> best ever. The wheels of Fly Cam is, is going to a different level this week.